So I hope you guys liked last week's video. It was a tour of my Notion workspace, or really just a part of it. So I am happy to continue showing parts of my personal Notion workspace. Today, what I wanna do is make a little bit of a shorter video. I wanna make one that specifically is about Notion finances. This is a request I get a lot. And it's interesting to me that I do get it a lot, but really I can understand why someone would want to track more broad, simple expenses, just an inflow of income and an outflow of expenses generally, budgeting and things like that with Notion. So I went in this past week and I tried to figure out what is the simplest and easiest way to do something like that. So I'm gonna stop talking and let's just get right into it. So in this personal cash flow, we have three different databases. We have monthly income, monthly expenses, and a balance calculator where they all connect to. So you'll see in balance calculator, there are four different properties. There's the starting balance. This is what you're going to fill in whatever balance you are starting with. Then you have another roll up property. Actually, you have two of them. One is for the total income, and this will be added automatically. And the balance formula will simply take our starting balance, add the total income, subtract the expenses, and give a fluid balance that will change as you manipulate these databases. So let's just make this from scratch. Firstly, inside of a blank page, what I'm doing is I'm making sure it is full width. And to do that, you can go up to the top right hand corner. There are three dots to click and you can toggle on full width. Let's create those three databases. So go forward slash inline table and call this balance calculator. We really only need one row here. So I'm gonna delete those other two. Do it two more times. Call this income and this one expenses. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of this tags um, property that comes with a new inline table. And I'm gonna give this one row its name, which is total balance. And then I'm just gonna create that starting balance property because we don't really need anything for that. So starting balance and turn the text into a number property. Let's say we're starting with $3,400. If I wanna change this to a dollar or some other currency and just go down to the currency I want, in this case, I want dollars. And that's pretty much all we need for that right now. Let's go down to income and change this tags property to month and just change this to select. I can do the same thing down here in expenses and change this to select. Here's another thing I wanna do. I wanna quickly just put in those 12 months, January to December, but I wanna do it quickly. So what I'm actually gonna do is change this back to text and I'm gonna go Jan, comma, space, to the next month and just kind of go down the line. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. From here, what I'm gonna do is first copy this cell Go down to expenses, change this to text as well, and just paste it in. And then I'm gonna change both of these properties to select. And inside of these select options, I will have all 12 months. So now that I have that, I can add the next property called amount. Change that to a number property. Do the same thing down here in expenses. And I can change this amount to dollars, again, like above and choose dollar. Before I continue, let's just put in some examples for income, like for instance, a paycheck. Now let's say there's actually another paycheck here. What you can do is create a filter. So let's create a filter and make sure this database view shows only the month of January. And we'll create another database view for February and so on. So that whenever I create a new entry, January will automatically appear. Say there's another paycheck. I can also put a date in here to see what date I received this money. Let's say maybe January 1st. So you can also do that if you'd like. Um, the next entry down might be something like a side hustle, um, donations made in the month, stuff like that. So let's just keep those as the examples. And let's say the amount made is $1,400. 
for paycheck. I can come down here at calculate and actually calculate a sum. So I'm just gonna do the same thing down here in expenses. It's gonna be the same filter. We're in this database view. I'm just gonna make sure that month is January. And the first expense might be something like rent. Another one, loans, subscriptions, entertainment, utilities, and grocery. And I can just do the same thing where I put in the amount. Okay, so now that I have this, what I'm gonna do is create another property to connect to this balance calculator because I want the sum of the amount in both of these databases to appear up here. So I'm going to create a property called to calculator. And I'm going to make sure it is a relation. And I'm going to find balance calculator. So select a database called balance calculator. And then from here, I can just find total balance. And you'll see that another relation has popped up inside of balance calculator, which is connecting back to related to income. And I can just change this to income and hide it. Don't really need to see that there. So if you wanna quickly make sure all of these connect to total balance, the first thing you can do right here is actually click inside of the cell, click out to make sure it is highlighted in blue, copy, click and drag all of these empty cells and then just paste them in. So that's one way to do it, but you can also adjust that filter to add another filter that says, and not only is the month of January, but two calculator contains total balance. So that for every new entry, it will always connect to two calculator. So now that we have that, I can create a roll up. So what I'm gonna do is call this total income. And I'm gonna make sure that this property is a roll up. And you'll find that right under relation. I'm gonna configure this roll up to find the income, which is that relation we just made. Make sure the property is the amount and to calculate the sum. And you'll see that it again is identical to that sum down here, 3,350. And I'm just gonna do the same thing over here in expenses to calculator, come down to relation and find that balance calculator. Make sure it says total balance, click out, copy, and then just drag down and paste. From here, what I can do is go to filter again and just add that other filter to calculator contains total balance. So this is pretty much all you have to do here. I can do again, total expenses. Actually make sure you go into total balance and I wanna rename this related to expenses to expenses. And I also wanna hide these two properties cause I don't need to use them. So always hide and always hide. Now in total expenses, again, we're gonna create a roll up and make sure instead of finding income, I wanna find the relation to expenses. Make sure the property is the amount and the sum. This is 2040, down here you'll also see 2040. Now what I wanna do is just create that formula that finds the balance. Go down to formula in advance and I'm simply going to come down to this list of properties, click starting balance, go plus, total income minus total expenses. And then from here, what you can do is again, go to one, two, three and click dollar. I can hide this to calculator because we don't need to see that because this filter already lets us know that every entry will automatically connect to total balance. Now what I wanna do is just create some type select properties. So let's make this a select property. And for each income, let's say choosing the option between a fixed income, so this is like a paycheck, and extra income. I'm really good at making typos, guys. All right, now I'm gonna just change this to blue. And paycheck would be considered fixed, and then fixed side hustle would be extra, and donations would be extra. And then again, I can do type property here as well and go to select, go fixed expense or a flexible expense. Like loans, for instance, would be fixed. Subscriptions is fixed. Entertainment would be flexible. Utilities, relatively flexible and groceries are flexible. Now with these flexible expenses, you might wanna have a budget. So I can make another property called budget, give it a number. 
And let's say for fixed, of course, it will always be the same. Make that a dollar. Drag it over to the end here. Okay, so now we have this. What I wanna make is a formula that will let you know if you have gone over or you are in budget. So this is not in the example I showed you in the beginning, but I thought it might be useful. So let's just change this to a formula and I'm just gonna go if the budget is greater than the amount, then I want this to say in budget. Otherwise, just show me over budget. I can also say, is it greater than or equal to? And I will have that property automatically update as well. But let's say I have a new entry. It will automatically tell me over budget. In order to fix this, we're gonna add another if statement at the beginning. So I'm gonna say if empty, if the budget is empty or empty, put this parentheses around, if the amount is empty, then empty space, otherwise everything we just made will apply. And put another parentheses at the end because there are two if statements to close and you can take a look at that. So now it will always be empty, even if I put in the budget as 500 and the amount is nothing, it will still be blank. If I put in 200, it will see that I am in budget. If I put in 600 though, it will say over budget. Now that I have that, I wanna create another view for February. So let's just add another view called February and make it a table. The default view, we're actually going to change the name of default view to January. Go down to February and just make sure those filters apply. But actually the best way to do this in my opinion is after creating that new view to go to January and duplicate it. Delete this February I just made. Go to copy of January and rename it to February. And then just change the filter to month is February. And I can just keep doing this and just duplicate, change copy to March and then just change that filter again to March. And it will always contain that total balance relation. Now I wanna show you how to create these columns and to color these databases. So firstly, what I wanna do is just enter this a few times and I'm gonna create a toggle forward slash toggle. And the first one I'm gonna call income and the second one expenses. And what I'm gonna do is just create two columns here by dragging over. And let's make sure this toggle income is the color blue and maybe expenses can be the color pink. So when I go to drag income inside of this toggle, everything inside will be blue. And if I do the same thing with expenses, everything inside will be pink. Another thing I want to do, I can actually drag this up at the top. Another thing I wanna do is make sure there is a sort. So I'm gonna go down to sort and make sure that I'm sorting this by amount descending. And I also wanna sort that type property. So I'm gonna go type is maybe, you can drag this up here. So I'm gonna see all my fixed expenses at the very top from the most to the least and then my flexible expenses down here. And I can just add that sort over here as well. Then what I did was I have that image, right? So I'm just gonna grab one of these empty blocks and make a column with another empty block and go forward slash image. And you can find images via unsplash. Just press this button here and maybe search for money. And I can put a little image there and then just drag this balance calculator under this column and adjust it so I can see everything. Another thing you can do is if you have a long list of entries and you just wanna look quickly at all of your fixed income or all of your extra income and you wanna see the sum total, what I suggest is just going to this search and going fixed income. And you can also search via tags. So this isn't just searching for your name, which is really nice. 
and you'll see that the sum has also adjusted. That's another cool way of visualizing your system. I actually wanna adjust this a bit, adjust this column so I can see my in budget or over budget. The last thing I wanna show you is another way to visualize these months. So if you don't wanna file through each one of these database views for each month, you can also create a linked database. So I'm just gonna go forward slash linked database. And let's say I wanna look at all my expenses through the year. I'm gonna look for the expenses database. And I'm gonna make sure that the view is board view. And it already has grouped all of my tags as the months. I'm going to hide this no month here so it's flush to the side. You can also change the group by. Right now it's by month. You could also look by type. And I can see everything, all of my expenses in January. I'm going to adjust how I see this though. So firstly, I'm going to go to properties. Card preview is going to be none. The card size small. I'm going to make sure I see the amount and the type and whether I'm over or in budget and that's it over here at the top you'll see a little number i can click through that as well and calculate the sum of maybe my budget or the amount i spent so in this way i can sort of just view the whole year as i go along and how much i spent each month you can do the same thing with income of course and create this board view and just make sure it's grouped by the month so that's another way of visualizing there's a lot of ways to visualize this stuff in Notion. So I suggest just playing around to get a feel of what you want. I'm going to leave that template down below, the finished template, which will have all of the months um, in the database views. So all that will already be created if you didn't want to do this along with me. So let's just get right into the outro. So if you are using Notion to track finances or you're using something similar to this or you plan on using something like this, let me know what your plans are down below. I also have a Discord link in the description so you can chat with me there. Also, if you have any specific questions, I'll most likely be able to answer questions there. And yeah, um, I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter. I also talk about Notion there all the time, Remnote and the rest. I also have a blog where I also publish different little tutorials on these programs. So all those links will be down below and I'll see you guys next week, probably with um, another tour video. You guys really liked the last week's Notion tour, which is kind of surprising to me. So I might do an equivalent with Remnote if you're uh, into that and I'll see you then.